Ladies and gentlemen, a good evening to you and welcome to another episode of the Italian Pod. As always, my co-host from Mexico, Eagle Ceres. Hola, raza, ¿cómo estamos? And from England, we have Lord Ra. Hello, everybody. And it's not my fault you can't have nice legs. Episode... What the hell was that? Care to repeat that? It's... it's not my fault you can't have nice things. <laughs> no, sorry, that's that's a physical impossibility. I know because I resurrected Einstein and put him to work on that theory. And uh, we have um, we have an 80% accuracy theory that it's your fault. We can't have nice things. <laughs> well, the corridor of well, uncertainty and all that. Let me go get Tesla for that. I need to confirm. Uh, I think he's occupi- occupied with a visual novel right now. <laughs> yeah, you saw on Steam they released that. Uh, how do you. Uh, the name is so weird. Gokushu or the Electrical, whatever. Yeah, basically, it's a, it's a visual novel, erotic, uncensored on Steam with, with uh, Nikola Tesla banging uh, high school students. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I thought that was more uh, Edison's thing because he married a 16 year old. Um, yeah, and, uh, Nikola Tesla was a virgin. <laughs> he died a virgin. Oh, ignore women, make science the impossible <laughs> dream. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Also... Uh, you know what he was doing? The thing is, he was following his passion. And eventually science. it was going to pay off. And then he'd have all the bitches. First and the riches. Immortality, then the bitches. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, enough with the Team Four Stars uh, reference for now. Uh, okay, <laughs> let's go to today's topic, which is a topic very dear to our hearts, because how we, did we all meet, guys? Enemy. Yeah. yeah. And this is about anime, Ada? And their adaptations, and... Yeah. <laughs> and uh, more specifically, Hollywood. Uh, anime. You're gonna make me say it, aren't you? Sorry? You're gonna make me say it, aren't you? No, I, yeah, I mean, I wanted you to say that, <laughs> but uh, oh. you, know, you take too long. Oh, this radio, guys. This is gonna be a back and forth. Adaptation. Not that, not that parts, not that silence. That's, uh, hurry, hurry, hurry. Back and forth. <laughs> Uh, Gits. <laughs> gits is an appropriate phrase. Of course, if, if you're familiar with the British slang, yeah, gits is an appropriate phrase for the primary one. Yes. Um, we're getting our Ghost in the Shell adaptation, and uh, Scarlett yeah. Johansson is uh, Major Motoko Kusanagi. And that does <sighs> not bode well. Okay. Before going into the nitpicking about, uh, you know, Scarlet, I think we should go first into Ghost in the Shell itself. So, to be more specific, what's Ghost in the Shell and why is it a big deal? It's reasonably hard sci-fi with some beautiful detailed drawings in the original manga and some gratuitous fan service. And the movie is brutally violent in a few scenes, and it has oh, the great line, admittedly in the dub. What was that? Oh, just your standard issue big gun. Uh, and what, what more do you want? <laughs> and, and the um, TV series can be abbreviated to Gitsack. And, you know, <laughs> it is. <Standalone> complex. <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, it's one of these things which makes me smile. It's like, uh, like I told people at work the German word for team is Mannschaft. The day I don't smirk <laughs> at that is the day I'm dead inside. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, what can I do? So, they're getting an anime, that, uh, I mean, an Hollywood adaptation, and the first pick got released. And uh, we weren't impressed, were we? I mean, I wasn't. Were you guys? Nah, one bit. Uh, okay, I'm, go- I'm going to link the, the peak in the description. Can you explain why? One at a time, of course. Okay, uh, my uh, my comment on this is uh, Ghost in the Shell, or Gets, as we love to say it, it's a cyberpunk cop slash military drama. 
Uh-huh. It's going to be serious. It's going to have some moments of levity. And um, more more important than that, because it's Mamoru Oshii and uh, Masamune Shiro, it's both going to have some TNA for the fan service, but it's also going to have some military fan service. Huge guns, and I'm not talking tits. Huge guns. <laughs> oh, yeah. Huge so, mecha. So, so... Oh, yeah. Robots, cyborgs, androids, all you want to talk about that one. And a lot of social political commentary. Huh. Yes. It, and yeah. uh, one deep. of the other elements is also the whole um, getting close to the um, in, what's the that gray area in between cyborg and humanity? How much? Oh, the yeah, old um, thing before you are exactly. cyborg, and how much you have to go before you are a human, stuff like that. Yeah, a bit of the old singularity and such. Um, uh, singularity! Sorry. Um, uh, all or not, it's in their, uh, I don't, their redub of the um, Star Wars prequels. Uh, yes, see, uh, what important weighty question. Uh, or at what point do you cease to be human when you're replaced with... Um, with a machine. Alter- yeah. Right, um, when I need you glasses. replace most of your body. Yeah, what, what makes us human? Well, in yeah, my opinion, that's, uh, pretty much what the makes you of uh, Deus Ex too, right? Oh yeah. yeah. The, the yeah. what makes us human is to be greater than the sum of our parts. Mm-hmm. You, know, you know, humans have a great deal of potential. It's what you do with it. You know, you no, know, I, I say if if I had a glass eye and a wooden leg, I'd still be human. You know, yeah, I, I could have four prosthetic limbs, and you no, know, I'd still be human. But, you know, if I had synthetic le- le- um, lungs, you know, if it was just a brainstem, would I still be human? Or would I just be, you know, freak yeah. in a jar? Yeah, it's, um, oh, it's heavy stuff. It's heavy stuff. And um, when the first details came out, we already weren't very confident because on top of Scarlett Johansson, we'll get to her later, the guy who's directing this stuff is the guy who... The biggest thing he ever did was Snow White and the Huntsman. What yeah, the uh... fine fuck? I mean, for this kind of uh, teams, uh, for this kind of story, you need some someone like, uh, I don't know, uh, Ridley Scott. Oh, yeah. You need yeah. someone James like Cam- Ridley Scott, uh, James Cameron. You well, can- uh, uh, early 90s James Cameron, yes. Okay, Modern early day 90s James Cameron. James no. Cameron. You give it to the guy who did the Snow White and the Huntsman? The shit? And that's a lot of money. It's not going to be a cheap project either. I mean, no. you're talking the best part of $100 million, at least, in order to do it justice. with Because the effect's going to be expensive. Because yeah, the it's the nature of the beast. Yeah, and uh, and the effects are not just going to be 3D CG. There's got, they, they have to do a lot of green screening matrix style to pull off a lot of the so elements in Ghost in the Shell. Of... Well, if anything for the for the Matrix fans, guess where they got a lot of those a, a lot of those ideas from Ghost in the Shell. Yep. Oh yeah, the, hey, anyone who claims the Matrix is original <laughs> is a uh, uh, no, it's uh, a Puri. It, it, it's a petri dish of uh, anime inspired elements. Uh, that's kind of... Yeah, it, it's you know, it's for Hollywood, it's original, but for a proper sci-fi <laughs> fad, yeah. So yeah, that's uh, that's uh, the the way it works. So yeah, uh, uh, Scarlett Johansson's an attractive enough uh, woman, okay, and the hair talk looks about, looks uh, about pick, right. But uh, then we get into her as an actress. The peak. Why doesn't the peak convince you? What's wrong with it? Um. Well, the fact that she's white and the character is um, Japanese. Okay. Well, go, uh, stepping away a little bit from the whitewashing, uh, mm-hmm. she looks like a uh, hot topic girl number 57 on a Wednesday <laughs> morning looking at something outside the rainy window instead of a strong military trained uh, cyborg. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, the, the, you get to the like the very first episode of Standalone Complex, the very the, the first three minutes, 
You get a feel for the major, the major. She, yes, is she beautiful? Is she is she pretty? Yes, she is. But uh, okay, first of all, her hair doesn't look like a wig. There's that. I can mean, that's a wig. You can see it's a fucking wig. She yeah. Okay, she's pretty. Yeah, but most importantly, she's badass. And just looking at her, just looking at her design, you can mean. This woman means business. I mm -hmm. don't get that at all from this uh, picture. I mean, the, the, this this wasn't a leak. This was the very first image they chose to represent the movie. This was intentional. They're saying, honestly, look at this. Honestly, I feel her role as Black Widow is closer to Motoko Kusanagi than that picture as Motoko Kusanagi. There is, uh, I don't think as, uh, an, as, as a personality wise, the thing is, she gets she has has this imposing, yeah. serious business. She's hot, she's beautiful, and everything, but she you know she means business. And in this picture, as Motoko Kozanagi, like I said, it, she doesn't look like she's a strong character. Yeah, and on top of that, and then we get. Um... Okay, uh, the, any other observation to the pick? Because then I want to get uh, into about her as an actress for the role. Uh, the, the, Anything the else pic about the picture? Uh, it, it's, a, the, it's, it's a generic uh, early production still shot. <sighs> She's She looks like she looks kind of bored, if I'm honest. Yeah. Um, also, her clothing is boring. Yeah, well, I'm not sure she's going to get away with the. Um, with the I don't know how to just. Yes, yeah, so with, with her uh, rather uh, saucy outfit that she normally wears. Well, um, they got away with her being in her underwear in the Avengers, so. so... Right. Yeah. Um, Wait. Well, <laughs> you know. Yeah. I I'm, I'm I'm not impressed with, with what I'm seeing so far, but I've seen one image, and you know, if she's just credited as the major, and then they're doing a bit of a adaptation, then uh, maybe it maybe it won't be as bad as Green Lantern. Uh, that's <laughs> a very are. low bar. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh right. God. We need to be worried, not not so much that it's bad like Green Lantern, we need to be more worried that it's bad like Dragon Ball Evolution. Oh, we'll get into that later. Or, uh, okay, one, Street Fighter, one at a Chun time. Lee. Please, Eagle, we can't take so much suck at the same time. Bit by bit. <laughs> okay, let's get into Scarlett Johansson as a choice, as an actress, to play the major. What are your thoughts about that? Um... Yeah, I, 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 just, I just can't get excited about it. Don't get me wrong. Um, don't, I don't know. Something feels off about it. I mean, I need to get around to watching Under the Skin, uh, which has uh, Scott Lee Hansen in as uh, an alien who goes around Glasgow picking people up and killing them and, and what have you. And she gets a kit off in that, which, you know, delightful. Um but I just can't get excited about this. Um, okay, elaborate. The, uh, what, is, well, what is it about her as Makoto Kusanagi that just makes you... Uh, nah, nah. What is it? The thing is, considering her previous roles, I think they, uh, I think they just grabbed her because she's Hollywood's action it girl right now. And uh, remember last year with, uh, or yeah, it was last year or two years ago when she uh, starred in Lucy? Lucy? Yeah. Which was, uh, was a uh... fun action movie, yeah, but it wasn't really that deep. Yeah, it wasn't really that. Uh, I mean, the action was there, but uh, it wasn't that good of action, an action, uh, anyway. I mean, it, it wasn't anything new, you know? Even the concept uh, was fucking stupid. Uh, but we already seen it uh, before, too. Yeah, it, well, it's, it's, it's uh, what Luke Besson seems to be doing in the last 15 years or so. has been somewhat, you know, 
in very interesting, but not terribly clever action movies. I mean, Taxi, uh, Lockout, or MS One. Mm-hmm. You know the one where Guy Pearce goes basically escape from New York, but in yeah. space, <laughs> uh, and and a couple of other things. Um, uh, interesting, but not terribly good. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Uh, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm thinking it would have been better to cast uh, Rinko Kikuchi from oh, Pacific Rim. Oh, my Rib. fucking God. Why did not think of her? Yeah. She's fucking didn't they think of her. What? Well, yeah, she's not a big star, so she'd cost less. I mean, that's... One. And, yeah. you know, you don't get the issue of her being whitewashed because she's of Japanese, Japanese disease. And she mm-hmm. can also... I mean, she, she also kind of looks like so. the major... Yeah, in um, yeah, in a Pacific Rim haircut's a, a bit similar to oh. it. So yeah, you know, no, uh, and she can kick ass. So yeah, yeah, she can. She can. I would have cast He's her as Ukrainian. major, and I would have gotten Dolph Lundgren out of retirement to do Bato. Oh, oh, he, he he could have been good, but then again, <sighs> did you get it? Get this for a dream pitch for it. <laughs> Yeah, this is. We uh, we get. Yeah, are, we, are we making this better? Yeah, I, think yeah. We are. I mean, it's not that because... hard, right? It's not that okay, hard. If we're, if we're, if we're doing that much better, we give it to we give it to Guillermo del Toro. We have Rob <laughs> Perlman as Bato. Exactly as Bato. Because <laughs> yes, you are. Yeah, we're on the same wavelength here, lads. Yeah, I mean, because wow. you, you've got your boss. I'm not sure who should be Togusa. I'm not sh- quite sure who can rock the mullet. The mullet. Chris Pratt. No. Uh, yeah. No. yeah. Oh, yeah, I can see that. I can see Chris I Pratt. I mean, yeah, I he, 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 well, Bato cracks more jokes than Togusa, but yeah, no, and, and I'm not sure who for Saito or the other chap whose name escapes me. Or yeah, or, 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 they're a, they're or a Aramaki, or yeah, a oh, we would, they... you know, we we would need somebody of the caliber of Sir Pat Stu to do uh, Aramaki. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh, and he can rock, and he can rock facial hair, which reminds me, I do want to see Green Room. Um, that's basically <laughs> where he's a very nasty man, oh. and uh, a punk, the synopsis is a uh, an aspiring band. Witness something quite unpleasant behind the scenes, and it's a bit of like a horror thriller sort of thing going on, and like neo Nazis and things. And uh, Patrick Stewart's not a very nice man in a film. It's like, oh, this could be really good. I do want to see that. Um, okay. But, but uh, yes, Chris, a, yeah. Sorry, also, sorry. who's who's doing the music, the music? for the for this movie? For, oh for God, the, the, the the, the music official for Ghost in the Shell is so fucking iconic. They, I don't think they you, released you, that information. They're not going to be doing Yoko Kano. Got to see oh, Yoko Kano or Kenji Kawai. I mean, I mean, Kenji Kawai's stuff is a bit. He he picks yeah. a theme. He, he picks yeah, like a, a motif for the for the soundtrack, and he, he plays on it a lot. A, a bit of repetition on it, which is his thing. But no, oh, come on. Or, or what's uh, it? What should it be Hans Zimmer? And the trailer have the Inception horns or some bullshit? Oh, please. <laughs> But you know, Yoko Kano or Clint work. Mansell, that would be awesome. That could work. That could work. The thing is, with the repetitiveness of Kenji Kawai, it helps to pay attention to the to the scenery, to the graphics, to transitions. In in this case, there's a lot to be said about those "quote unquote" quiet scenes that make you think about what just happened. <laughs> Uh, Hollywood doing quiet effective. scenes. <laughs> exactly. No, seriously. There, I, I don't. Uh, these are cases, especially with comedy. But uh, if g- films in general, they rel- they rely way too much on dialogue uh, nowadays. Like, uh, com- I mean, if in comedy they rely too much on dialogue, figuring anything else. Yeah. The- they're not doing subtlety very well. No. But one, let's say, I'm sorry to go on a tangent, but yeah. we briefly mentioned this earlier in our mm-hmm. history and podcast of a film that looked quite interesting. Um, uh-huh. uh, that Midnight Special, 
the uh-huh. one with Michael Shannon, uh, who, who's taking his son away, and his son's got special powers. I saw that in the week, and that's excellent. I highly recommend that one if you, if it's if it's playing near you. Um, okay, it's it's a relatively low budget job, uh, less than thirty million dollars. I think I saw it was eighteen. But it, the effects in it are pretty good, and there's the scene where you're seeing something. Well, everyone's seeing something that they weren't expecting to see, and it's kind of beautiful. And I'd, I'm reluctant to say more because I'll be spoiling it. But Michael Shannon is fantastic. Even the kid's pretty good on it. Hmm. I mean, child actors are usually pretty bad. Um, but yeah, the, this the, you know, good performances all around. And there is a couple of moments where something happens. You know, oh, bloody hell. I wasn't expecting that to happen just then. <laughs> it's like, oh, oh, okay. But yeah, I highly recommend Midnight Special. I also saw Hardcore Henry, but that's for another time. Uh, <laughs> that's for another time. Uh, uh, I want to say okay. there's right now one thing that's uh, that, that's actually good about the current casting for the, for the Ghost in the Shell movie. And that is? And it's uh, Aramaki is Takeshi Kitano. Okay, so I can see that. One of, he's one of the classic badasses in Japanese movies. Yeah, I can and see that. Fun. I can see that. If you, okay, if, but... you, if, you don't, if you have seen some of his movies, it's like uh, Satoichi. Eh? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, oh, yeah. I guess they old... got uh, everything else wrong. To do. I mean, at least what we know of it so far. Okay, uh, returning to um, to Scarlett Johansson, uh, the major Makoto Kusanagi. Okay, there is the big uh, white elephant in the room to discuss, uh, and that is. Uh, don't you mean? Don't you mean Indo-European, Indo-Asian elephant? <laughs> yeah, but but uh, the elephant right now is white. <laughs> it's not Asian. Okay, so of course uh, the. The, let's call them the purists were bought her because they cast uh, Sky Johansson, a white woman to play Makoto Kusanagi who is uh, Japanese and it's also stated in the manga that it's important that you have bodies that correspond to your original race before you became a cyborg and that is because the brain. what happens if you get a different body from the one you're supposed to have. Oh, you, you, you get the joy of um, what they call body horror. And oh, I forgot the, the the condition, but you look in the mirror and you don't recognize yourself. And it's quite a horrific scenario. Mm-hmm. Yeah, pretty much uh, you go kind of insane, basically. Yeah. So and it's the, kind and of the thing is... Fight. The thing is, uh, Shio Masamune, he's a big uh, both uh, sci-fi and f- uh, and fantasy freak. Uh-huh. So he goes into really rich detail when making his mech, or when when making uh, Ghost in the Shell, and uh, and uh, he made like the better part of five huge detailed art books for Intron Depot, and he details every little insignificant thing you wouldn't believe. <laughs> and like you said, you know what? It's it's a if cyberization. You know what? You're taking basically your brain out of your body and putting it in a in a robotic body. So first and foremost, your brain's gonna think, okay, I can't move my left pinky toe because it's five millimeters off, mm-hmm. or yeah. I can't. I, I, I'm losing balance, or I'm not seeing the right thing I'm supposed to be seeing in the mirror. And like I said, body horror. Yeah, that is, it's just one of these things you're looking at, this isn't right. And that's, which, apologies for the ta- tangent, which may be why a lot of people are focusing on transgender rights at the moment. Because <laughs> you can imagine, I, I wake up and I feel like I'm in... You're what? For we can, 90... We can hear you. Repeat. Oh, sorry, you imagine, wait, if you imagine waking up and you don't feel you're in the right body... I mean, for ninety nine point seven percent of us, or whatever it is, you know, ninety nine percent of the population, you know, you, you can't imagine it. But for the for those unfortunate people, are it's like, oh, it's horrific, it's horrific. And then the people who do figure that it is horrific because it would be, they so they make it up to be a huge thing, which is why Tumblr decides that you know transgender is yeah. the biggest thing. 
of course, they also do it on Tumblr for attention. Of course, if it's not porn or art on Tumblr, it's probably worthless. It's a bit harsh, but, you know, yeah. <laughs> prove me wrong. <laughs> so, okay, so anyway, uh, the major being Asian is actually a point uh, that needs to be respected because for the way that the world in the anime and the manga works, it's not just uh, weeboos complaining or stuff like that. Also, right. the original story is localized in a, a, a Japanese city that has heavy Hong Kong influence. Yeah, as in I mean, heavy, the... heavily uh, modernized metropolitan that has both its uh, its nice, classy areas and its deep, down, grungy, grody... Uh, yeah, but, yeah, it's also Hong Kong influence, but still, Asian. I mean, the very first episode... They have to infiltrate a geisha restaurant. You don't get more Japanese than that. Mm-hmm. Attack the Wakabayashi. Waka <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, it's not uh, that we're complaining because we're purists. Uh, we're we're complaining because it doesn't make fucking sense in the context of the fucking story. And I want to address. I want to address uh, a point that was made uh, by a YouTuber in particular. That YouTuber's name was uh, Mundane Matt. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He what? made a video that starts by saying, I've never watched the Ghost in the Shell before. That's mm-hmm. your first hint that this guy's talking out of his ass. I kind of like his yeah. stuff, but sometimes he can talk out of his ass, and this time he did talk out of his ass. And, uh, okay, so anyway, his point is that uh, Makoto Kusanagi in the Ghost in the Shell movie doesn't matter, because uh, in manga and anime, anyway, they draw all the characters, even the, if they're Japanese, they're drawn white. Um, no. 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 <laughs> in a word. No. Go ahead, Rob. Take it over. I, I know. I think I know what you're going to say, but go ahead. Okay. Uh, well, me... I put you in. The, the, put you in. Um, uh, oh, what's his ch- uh, name? Um, Bandit oh. Keith in uh, Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> it's like <laughs> <laughs> he looks but significant. Bandit Keith. Any any stereotype. The thing is, Japan and anime they love to use their tropes, and more than anything, they love to use their stereotypes. Yep. But they use the stereotypes both, and sometimes it may come off as racist, but in other times it's like because of subtlety again. Uh, like I said, Bandit Keith, he's all America. How many movies, uh, animated movies, we've seen when they uh, depict anything American as blonde hair, blue eyes, tall, tall, and if they're female, has huge tracts of land? Yeah. yeah. Also, the nose. The nose. The nose. The nose. So it's it, so yes. If for, the thing is, yeah, the thing is, they draw everybody white. Um, no, we would they draw everybody Japanese white if, if everybody anime style. Country. Yeah, and anime style. And the thing is, it's for them. Light skinned is Asian. Yeah, for them, white is light skinned Asian. The thing Have is, you ever if seen you want Japanese brown people, skin, they're pale. They're pale. They're white. Well, that's because the hikamoris don't get out much and don't don't get no vitamin D. That's <laughs> uh, it looks so pale <sighs> and withered. Is, most animation does not depict brown skin or tan skin unless they're from a this, uh, the separate area in Japan, uh, mostly uh, Okinawa. Uh, yeah, Okinawa, yeah, the southern of Japan. Or if they, or if they're like uh, South American, African, or Black American. Yeah. Yeah, but they don't, they, they don't depict they don't depict themselves as yellow skinned because, because they're not they're yellow still... skinned exactly and, so... and, and 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 have the big eyes so you can you know because it's easier to draw an expression you know, exactly. it, you know, it's, a, it's a stylistic choice I mean fucking hell I'll put you in the direction of fucking Pablo Picasso he's yeah. fucking cubist Pablo. No, that shit doesn't represent anything. That's fucking bullshit as art style goes. But you know yeah. what? It's a stylistic choice for how he's seeing the world. Don't, um, you know, 
if anyone does say that's how they see things, then maybe, you know, they should see a doctor. You might or something. need some medical so, right. attention. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he kind of talked out of his ass on that. Uh, everyone, everyone who makes uh, that fucking... Everyone who makes that fucking argument uh, is... Uh, is a moron and is a co- is a casual. The, these are the the arguments of an anime and manga casual. These are the arguments of people who t- t- they've seen Dragon Ball Z Funimation style, maybe Attack on Titan and Full Metal Alchemist, and think they're experts on anime and manga. You don't and know that, shit. Now here's uh, now here's the the caveat for those. One, they're not on Earth. They're on that parallel Earth that's kind of like it, but no. Attack on Titan is basically settled in what it's not Europe. Yeah, yeah. It's not. Yeah. It, it's not even not Asia. It's not Europe. Uh, for example, Yu-Gi-Oh supposedly part not Japan, but come on, ra- how radical are those hairstyles and hair colors? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that not even Japan. realistic. <laughs> you can Dragon Ball, that in come Japan. on, that's not even real. Not, that's not even not Earth. <laughs> I mean, well, I... yeah, anthropomorphic pigs, and I'm yeah. not talking politics. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, kind of unrealistic. So, yeah, before you spoil that kind of shit, uh, get a culture on manga and anime, because otherwise you you will always talk out of your ass. Yeah, okay. it's 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 just bad as Cowboy Bebop at his computer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I dread the, the day they try up. to do a, a Cowboy Bebop Hollywood adaptation. There, there was talk of that at one point with Keanu yeah, Reeves as Spike I dread Spiegel. That. No, here, here's the thing. Good thing you brought up Cowboy Bebop because that's actually a good example of the authors using multiple uh, nationalities. Yeah. Setting it up as multiple planets. Planet yeah, Earth basically that. became planet that. Mexico. Pla- uh, planet Mars is basically planet Hong Kong. Planet uh, Jupiter is basically planet Chicago. Yeah, I mean, there's... And, uh, and you actually got people of different races, different colors, uh, mm-hmm. of, uh, different amounts of uh, melanin in their skin. Uh-huh. <laughs> So it's, it's, you, can, you can actually say, okay, this guy looks black, this guy looks white, this guy looks Asian, this person looks ba 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 ba. Hey, whatever. Hmm. So that one actually does, but that was more again a uh, stylistic choice mm-hmm. to differentiate between the the cultures. So let's say the mafia bosses, the yakuza triads, the uh, uh, Russian mafia, Russian mobsters, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. It's a bit, but that was the whole thing about Cowboy Bebop because it was kind of like the Wild West, the 1920s, 1930s, modern 80s. So they mixed a lot of a, a lot of elements, a lot uh, and a lot of cultures there. And the authors took their sweet time doing the research. Yes, and then it was a quite high budgeted show, from what I recall. Um, it is uh, well. Let's say there's a lot going for it. I mean. The CGI you don't really notice, which is no the best kind of CGI. You know, you, you accept that there's going to be stuff on there to uh, because it's cheaper to do it that way, and this yeah. you know, cost cost is king. Um, so yeah, it's saying oh you, you're barely noticing it because when we were talking from like 1998, CGI and animation was noticeable most of the time. Yeah. Uh, so it's like, yeah, you you look at it, and go, wow, that's that's a little too shiny, and that's a bit jarring. That is, um, but you no, know, suitably it it looked right and things. So like you, they're taking their time, and you know, you, you, I take it you've encountered all the references and homages in Cowboy Bebop. You know, like the that's bit from e- uh, Enter the Dragon with um, Abdul Hakim and. Uh, you know, oh, there's a character called Asimov. Oh, wow. you know, there's just 
Yeah, oh yeah, the, in the first episode. Uh... <laughs> first episode when they hit that uh, that little bar in Nat Tijuana. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and uh, yeah, and Jet it, it was uh, cool that goes, uh, goes over the bar, the bar grabs a bottle of booze, and says, "Hmm, Presidente, that's a <laughs> bottle of Mexican brandy." Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, it was good at that. It was good at that. But um, anyway, and, and, and so it... final thoughts on what you think the Ghost in the Shell movie is going to be like? I don't think it's going to be good, like at all. I I want it to be good, but I'm not seeing anything to get me excited about it. In fact, if at this rate, if anything more comes out of it, I'm, my interest level may actually go down. So yeah. at the moment I'm indifferent. No, in theory, if, if it was to come out and I could see it for free on my cinema pass, I probably would if I was massively bored. But I need some more details for something for it to get me excited. You know, who's doing the music? For for example, I mean, if the music is someone good that I like or who's done a, you know, good scores in the past, you know, I again. Uh, Clint Mansell because I love the music from Moon and the you know, soundtrack for Pi and of course you've heard Lux a, a Turner uh, from mm-hmm. Requiem for a Dream so you, that, which got used in uh, a lot of uh, trailers um, uh, you know it, it, it was the Inception horns of its day yeah, uh, in the early, <laughs> early 2000s but yeah you know, Okay, uh, bottom thoughts, uh, so Will, you're going on another tangent that I have to stop you because we have to talk about <laughs> other stuff. Yeah, um, I'm currently indifferent. If, if, I see, if I see some more details that excite me, I'll start getting excited. But at the moment, I'm just going to ignore it. You, go. Mm, uh, like Ra, cautiously interested, but getting turned off because of Inclusiveness, togetherness, whitewashing. Yeah, pretty much. The thing is, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say it. I'm a shameless weeb, and I'm gonna, and I would prefer to have a more, a cast that actually resembles more the characters, at least the design and the intent of the characters, not just uh, okay, we're gonna get these guys because they're famous. Yeah. Okay. Uh, me personally, I'm not excited about this, uh, and uh, to be fair, uh, I, okay, I already said that I'm angry at people sh- spouting shit about uh, manga and anime because we, they have to defend this, but also, it's GWs. Where are you? Where are you? No one is getting well, angry? Oh, I, I, no? No, because Where, hey, they, this, well, this they, 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 cutter, I, this an Asian cutter, this an Asian cutter, a white person. No one's getting angry here. Well, I well, guess, well oh, obviously the Asians, the the Asians must have rolled white on the on yeah. the daily on yeah, the person of color chart white, for the day. Okay, but so anyway, obviously they're the, white today. Yeah, the the biggest part of people who are getting angry are the anime fans for good reason. But uh, so. Uh, uh, Idris Elba getting chosen for uh, for a guy who looks like Clint Eastwood in the Dark Tower series is okay, but uh, the, this I don't know I I don't know where I was going with it. Okay, I'm pissed. I'm not excited. Moving on because this is something that is going to happen and we're not hopeful. Let's go to something that happened and destroyed us. <laughs> you mentioned it Which earlier, one? Eagle. Which one? <laughs> the one uh... like, of course <laughs> no okay, th- no 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 <laughs> yeah let's start we're there. talking about anime <laughs> adaptation here well although there have been anime adaptations of street fighter mind mm. you uh, i'm not quite sure how you do a, a good story about a fighting game because the whole premise of it is people being punched in the face. Uh, how do you make a good story about that? I mean, I have. Uh, are, I could have. I mean, it's not a bloody Fight Club. Well, like, a good story about punching people in the face is Hokuto no Ken, so. <laughs> yeah. That's oh, you mean, oh they, they did an adaptation okay. of that. Guys, really, yeah, that's the most you that recent Sakaj. The most recent uh, disaster. The one with Cho Yan Fat in it. 
Did, did that try and fight? I'd watch him in almost it, it, anything. Wasn't that, wasn't that one supposed to have monkeys? Yeah. <laughs> and something about journeying to the west? Yeah. Uh, quite possibly. Quite yes. possibly. Oh wait, uh, oh, wait, I know what you mean. You, you're talking about Dragon Ball Evolution. Yes, I'm talking about that. My god. My god. But, the, the, dude, the... it was so cool because he was a teenager. Yeah, radical, dude. <sighs> the, 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 the only good thing that came out of that thing is the, is the honest trailer with the Team 4 Star Voices. That's really the yes. only thing... The only good thing that came out of that movie. With Ve even Vegeta panning and saying, what the hell, I'm glad I wasn't even in this movie. <laughs> yeah, so glad I was in this movie. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I've, uh, okay, yeah. So let's go in order. Okay, for those who have been living under a rock or those who have uh, just been born, I guess, what's Dragon Ball Z and why it's a big deal? Um, it's a loose retelling of Journey to the West. Um, well, that was Dragon Ball. Dragon well, Ball Dragon was Ball... Uh, after that. Well, uh, to be honest, I never really cared for Dragon Ball. The, the character designs turned me off from it. I'm sorry <laughs> for being so massively shallow, but that's just, you know, one of those things. It's mm. not to say that it, it's all, you know, there's no merit to it. I mean... The original manga is quite ribald in parts and, you know, quite lewd from what I gather. Well, maybe not lewd, but certainly a um, bit, bit dirty, which you know, appeals to my uh, filthy mind. Um, but I, I, I never, never, never really cared for it because it may have been a um, something of a uh, uh, cliche. It's like, oh, here they are. We're going to spend four hours screaming at each other, powering up, and then we're going to have five seconds of fighting. Uh, that which, uh, which... <laughs> <laughs> so there's only so much of that I can take, and thought, well, you're not, yeah, you know, I'm not. I don't want to look at stuff which is which I think may be giving me eye cancer for, you know, for four episodes, <laughs> and not see people actually having the shit kicked out of them. I'm not. <laughs> I don't want to see that. You know. You don't want to see well, yeah, because the, the thing is, Evolution tried too hard to be both Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z. Dragon Ball originally was a yeah. very, very, very loose uh, anim uh, adaptation of Journey of the West, the Sun Wukong, all of those. Yeah. Well... They, they were trying to do stuff. And in Dragon Ball, it was... Uh, they started with that, and then they hmm. found, that, okay, there is these seven magical orbs, and when you get them together, you can get a wish granted by the god, dragon, that, whatever. That was completely original for Toriyama. There is no trace of that in Journey to the West, which is a mm -hmm. Chinese novel for those not in the noon. Mm -hmm. And then they bring in a giant uh, martial arts tournament with completely weird characters from God knows where on Earth, if they're from Earth. And then there's the the, the Mechian race, which is a uh, almost godly powered alien, uh, not quite alien, alien race. Mm -hmm. And then the movie tried to make it seem even weirder. Yeah, and it didn't really go well. Okay, so le let's list the feelings. First off, the castings. The castings for that movie. <sighs> how were they? Well, uh, how were they? I feel or... sorry for Chow Young Fat. Yeah. yeah, not I'm... actually seen him anything new since. If they've killed his career, I'll be very unhappy because the man would look cool painting a ceiling in his house. I mean, <laughs> I mean, we we're dealing with the guy who was, um, I would say, but it, he, the the guy who's in, incredibly awesome. I mean, have, have you not seen Hard Boiled? One of my favorite action movies, including the tea house scene where he slides down the banister with pistol and leech hand. That is one of the coolest things you will ever see in a film. And they, if they've killed his career, I will find them and have them fisted to death. Yeah, I mean, this is unacceptable. Yeah, because but, yeah, uh, let's but... remember, he played in the movie, he played Master Roshi. And yeah. how did he play Master Roshi? Okay. What's the original Master Roshi like, first of all? The original Master Roshi is a shameless perv. Okay. He's what a badass, did make him... but he's still a shameless perv. A, a, a popular character type in Japan, I'm led to believe. 
Okay, because okay. Uh, on top of being a shameless perv in Japan, Master Roshi is also... Oh, as a... He is a typical sensei character. He is the, the old sage that is imparting upon the young'uns information of the ages. And uh, while not the, t not the typical formal teacher you would get you, you would get the vibe like from like a gandalf type character or uh -huh. that's no, yeah well and more relaxed more like you know what life happens have fun don't take it so seriously and ooh titties you did it what's the master Rushi played by cho yang fat in evolution he uh. feels like a watered down mr miyagi <laughs> The fi I like the, I like the definition. Uh, define that, please. I really like it. You know, the, the thing is, Mr. Miyagi. It's uh, it, it was uh, from the Kara Kid, uh, from the original trilogy. Uh, older gentleman that had lived a pretty hard life, migrated to America, found a kid that was ha had trouble and helped him build up his self esteem through martial arts, especially okay. karate. And, uh, and then we find out that he still has a life back at home in Japan, and, and he has issues to be resolved. And his pupil pretty much t uh, takes his banner and uh, helps resolve them with uh, whoever is having issues with him. Yeah. So it's a little bit of tit for tat. It's like, uh, you teach me, now I, I, t I take the banner of you so you don't have to dirty or sully your hands, master. While in the Dragon Ball Evolution, it was like not even close to that. It was like, yeah, I'm teaching you martial arts. Ha ha. Yeah. There's also... Okay, th let's go There's to... There's no deepness, no meaningfulness. Yeah. Because um, th th there was a meaning to a lot of that. I mean, all the characters were off. Uh, like uh, Bulma. It wasn't Bulma. Like, I don't know who that was, but that wasn't Bulma. Because Bulma in the original Dragon Ball was... Um, I, I say, I don't know. <laughs> Bulma in the original Dragon Ball, she was this spunky teenager looking for adventure and uh, found uh, Goku and they pretty much become kind of, kind of like the weird buddy cop feeling where she is uh, the whole highfalutin... Uh, Civilian, while Goku was this country bumpkin martial artist. Yeah. Also, so while she was a like a, a, an older girl, she was like, "Ooh, cute guys. Ooh, money. Ooh." So they played up those stereotypes. She was a teenager, and yeah. she had fun with that. And in the movie, she came off. Uh... No, it's not even close to that. Or the uh, the Dragon Ball Z version, which was supposedly more mature. More adult, not in the sense of uh, NC seventeen rating, but more, more, uh, more mature in the sense that okay, she's gone through a lot of stuff uh, during the last few years with yeah. Goku and Kuro. now she uh, now she's growing up a little bit more, taking back taking yeah, ownership she... of her, fam her, fa her family's company, whatever. Yeah, also like she travels across space uh, to resurrect her friends, uh, so there's that. She's also an element of the adventure of, of the of the whole crew. Yeah, without her, there is a lot of shit that would have gone the same way. Like, uh, you know, just finding the Dragon Ball. Without Bulma, that would have been impossible. Mm -hmm. So many times, too. And um, uh, in the in Dragon Ball was... they pretty much they pretty much undid a lot of... They didn't even take advantage of a lot of character design or a lot of the character information from her saying you know what yeah she could have been in a certain role kind of like an operator mm -hmm. for the for the go for the growing goku character in the sense that okay you know what let's go this way let's find that way oh hey i got information about this kind of like being the the uh the brain per se m yeah. or the q for goku yeah instead in uh and let's go to the main character, Goku. Goku. How was... Okay, how's Goku... We have to make a distinction here. How's Goku in the original uh, Dragon Ball series? How's Goku in the 
English dub, because that's very different, and how's Goku in Dragon Ball Evolution? Goku in the original... Uh, in the original series in Japan, he basically created the general main characters that we call the Blood Knights. They basically, they're people that only care about fighting. For them, the, 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 the adventure is in fighting stronger and stronger enemies. And uh, everything else doesn't really matter. Uh, Goku basically started that. But the thing is, it got worse as the series continued. In Dragon Ball Super, it's almost unbearable. In a, but because, for, because of this, he actually lets the earth explode and all his loved ones die. Because he wanted to enjoy a fight more. And uh, there's other stuff. But um, it was kind of bearable. But the, the problem is, he wasn't a hero of justice. He liked his friends uh, and wanted to protect them. But you, he always was in it for the thrill of it. For the thrill of the fight. Also, he was kind of a moron. Always has been. Oh, yeah. How is he in the English dub, Beagle? Pumpkin, he... Hmm? He? Yeah, the thing is, he was originally a country bumpkin. He was a he, he was a lost kid in the woods that got found by who, uh, who is now uh, adoptive grandfather was, uh, raised him, taught him mar- martial arts, and then at a certain age, it was, okay, go ahead and uh, travel the world, do your do your thing. And the only thing he actually learned was uh, barely how to talk right. He wasn't really scientific, <laughs> science, uh, science uh, leaning. But he had a good time uh, meeting people, having fun, beating up stuff. Yeah. And then in Dragon Ball Z, we find out, oh, he's actually an alien. Stop oh, he's coming from a race of uh, of, ba- of, of, uh, of aliens that like to battle. That's super powered like, oh. aliens. Yeah. Oh, that, that is like, oh, that explains so much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lot. Well, it's like, he okay. Said- so he was never supposed to be a genius because his thing, it's hard coded into a system to be a battle junkie. <laughs> yeah. Instead, in the in the Japanese, in the English, in the U.S. dub, they kind of turned him into Superman, basically. Yeah. Yeah. That's not the point at all. I I think that uh, there was a big controversy with Team Four Star because their version of Goku is much closer to the original. I I'd say mm-hmm. it's even better in uh, at parts because uh, without Toriyama treats him and stuff. But the thing is, uh, there was a lot of dissonance uh, because uh, Team Four Star treated him like he really is. Uh, but uh, the fans that grew up in America treated him like uh, Superman, basically. And uh, in the movie, instead, okay, first of all, he went to high school, right? No. Obviously. Oh, in the movie. Oh, yeah. In the movie. It, it, in the movie. Uh, the Evolution Goku was. Uh, Teenage character du jour number fifty-seven. Yeah, yeah. It, it, oh, fuck it out. It's like a, someone written a high school fanfic <laughs> and just use the characters by names. I mean, yeah. Without even any Bardock. Oh, fuck damn it. Yeah, <laughs> and, yeah, and he was. Nobody um, remembers Bardock. <sighs> only the real, only those cool fans remember Bardock. Yeah. Now everyone will remember Bardock. Uh, mark my words. And um, <laughs> uh, how how is he? Uh, I mean, Goku in the in the movie car- character wise. Honestly, they tried to shoehorn Daniel Larusso from the from the Karate Kid and make him Superman Karate Kid. Yeah, including okay. the big bad alien bad guy. Oh uh, yeah. Then we get to, I think it's, I think it's, uh, I don't know if uh, Piccolo is the worst part of this movie or Cho Yan Fat. I don't know. Uh, I, I I don't know. Okay, so Piccolo, in the original manga, who is Piccolo? Uh, Piccolo is, uh, originally, in the original manga, he was the, the, the guy to beat the really big bad guy at the end. Because uh, he was like part of the whatever Kami being, he was his bad side. He was his evil side, his aggressive side. So uh, Mm -hmm. Kami let Piccolo fight to be able to purge himself of the evil. Yeah. 
then uh, okay, so and then, basically, and then Dragon Ball Z came over and the American version, and they made him okay. Okay, already lost to you. Now I'm part of your crew, but I still have this kind of uh, frenemy status with you. Yeah, then Gohan came along, and he basically was uh, Gohan's uh, actual father I figure. Say, actually, Gohan's more Gohan's dad than Goku. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. It's very telling the new series, Dragon Ball Super. Gohan decides to start training again after something happens. Who does he ask uh, to train him again? Does he ask his father? No. He asks Piccolo. That's, that, that says a lot. That says a lot. Anyway, so... And in the movie, Piccolo is... Past the uh. CGI, makeup, whatever the fuck that was... Because it doesn't look at all like that. Whitewashing, there is whitewashing all around here. What is Piccolo in the movie? Piccolo became the classic 1980s big villain. (sighs) With martial arts. Care to elaborate that, please? So if if you want if you ever watch any any 1980s 1990s uh, big hero big superhero big uh, Hollywood hero movie, there's this typical bad guy that is so deliciously cheesy, ridiculously evil, uh. and you're gonna spend only at the end of at the end of the movie get his comeuppance, while every other time he's just I am so evil, ha 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 ha, suck my dick. Suck my dick. <laughs> Suck my dick. Yeah, it, and in, the, in in Dragon Ball Evolution, they made him seem like, you know what? It's he's all those evil ca- evil bad guys from the eighties and nineties movies. But at the very end, you you notice, oh, he's kind of like super powered. Oh, he's kind of like an alien. Oh, he can kick ass harder than Goku until he powers up. Yeah. Okay, and then we get to the. Um... Okay, so characters horrible, writing horrible, choice choices for casting horrible, adaptation horrible. But then we get to I think maybe it's the worst thing about it because pass over the characters, pass over the castings, pass over the writing because uh, Dragon Ball has never been that great about the writing. It's been uh, uh, decent. I mean. You could maybe you could just st- stomach it if he did what Dragon Ball is famous for: the fight scenes, the key blasts, the giant lasers. Does this movie have anything of that? No. <laughs> In a they word, they tried to, but it failed so bad. Yeah, they tried the... to do a Kamehameha wave, and now the fart. That's coming. Oh yeah, it just came off so. Just uh, it. The thing you won't like about Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z is the fantasy fisticuffs. Yeah, exactly. The over the top. I'm a, I'm a super I, I'm a Superman. So am I. Let's see who's got the bigger schlong and beat the crap out of each other. Yeah, pretty much. Who can toss a bigger uh, martial arts special attack from Street Fighter? <laughs> yeah, pretty much, yes. And in the movie, they're like, okay, let's make it a story about aliens and martial arts and... Not much lasers. The story's Not already me. there. You just need to translate it and adapt it so people that don't even care about the cartoon get somewhat interested. That's all you needed to do. No. Yeah. They they didn't. They didn't. This is uh, which, okay. So, which comes back to our rage about Ghost in the Shell. It's like the story's there. You don't really need to modify it. You don't need to modify anything. Just adapt it, or at least uh, you can't make a movie about the entirety of the Dragon Ball saga. That's fucking impossible. Just take. Uh, Take a small segment, or maybe try to adapt one of the lesser known ones. Like, uh, I would have loved uh, if they adapted uh, the Bardock Sada episode of Bardock, or 
one of the um, the uh, the sec one of the video games for the PSP for Dragon Ball, the one where they go into the the, the future and uh, the, okay. So anyway, this was a mess for this was going to be a mess from the beginning, but they made the worst mess ever. They actually put effort into making this bad. Yeah. It's it's incredible. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's harder to make it bad than it is to make it good. When you know, see, you the, the the mind boggles how bad they can be to try to do this. But uh, it's just a case of uh, apologies yeah, for this, the depressed uh, sighs because. <laughs> okay, and um, from uh, bad to worse, we get into. A movie that is just in the talks right now. They have a director attacked. They has made some controversial statements. But and uh, okay, it's it's the Akira movie. Yeah, Akira. that's not gonna go right. That's <sighs> not gonna go right at all. Like we already know, we don't we don't yet to know who's going to play Wu. We already know that it's gonna suck. And why is that? Okay, first of all. Will, you? Why is Akira a big deal? What's Akira? Well, what is it? Uh, as, as that's what the trailers asked. Um, you know, it's a sprawling tale of uh, like, um, well, um, mm. urban decay and you no know, youth struggling after a you know, well, Japan rebuilding after a war in the. Uh, it's set in 2019, just before the Tokyo Olympics set in 2020, which is happening in 2020. It's like, hmm. somebody's got a sense of humor, yeah, or it's or... just bizarre coincidence. <laughs> or, Japan's, or Japan's trolling everybody and he's going to unleash its space-based laser on them. Yeah, or which, you know, is that would be cool for some reason. Okay. As long as we don't 2019 get a colony in... Sorry? Sorry? As long as we don't get a colony drop. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, that... That'd be bad. That'd be bad. Worst Christmas present ever. Um. <laughs> anyway, so it's a big deal because of teams, uh, or what it represents. Uh, but uh, uh, it was a manga first. And I had to say, except yeah. for the ending that was maybe a bit, uh, you know, unclear. It didn't wrap up everything. But uh, the manga is good. But most people know Akira because of the anime movie, which was kind of different. Yeah, and then well, took some of the base ideas, and then went cyberpunk with somewhat horror, body horror in it. Yeah, but, uh, it it did keep a lot of the psychological and uh, theological and sociological themes to it. Just it just didn't go balls deep. Yeah, yeah. Well, so... well you've you've got a two hour runtime. That you are the same. Yeah, you know, it, it, playing devil's advocate, uh, which yeah. I tend to do a lot. Yeah, of, the, I, the movie ever the movies have a time uh, limit. I just say that it's different. I, I didn't say it's bad. It's uh, I think it's a good anime movie. I just could never understand what the fact that the the last sentence was. I am Tetsuo. What the hell does that mean? <laughs> Basically, I mean, I tried people. The new Akira. Sorry, it means he wasn't phone. He wasn't. It means he wasn't phone. The... <laughs> but then who was phone? Sorry. I don't. <laughs> no, I, I mean, I saw people trying to justify it in every way possible, but um, I, I, they just didn't uh, sound. Uh, I, I seen a lot of theory. A lot of theory, uh, theories uh, to try and explain that last sentence. No one ever stuck. It's like it's like someone just decided to end it uh, randomly. I don't know. Maybe being trolled uh, would be the first time. Um, yeah, filmmakers yeah. have trolled us. Uh, it <laughs> won't be the last. Forty-two. <laughs> Returning to Hollywood, uh, they're t- trying to adapt the movie now. The movie, the manga, whatever the 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 property, and uh, this is going to suck big time. Why do we say that? 
Eagle? Because it's it's going to be a hodgepodge of a lot of ideas that was from the original movie and the manga, plus whatever they're going to do to localize it, which is going to completely lose the effect. The thing is, what are you going to localize from the movie? Uh, the plight of youth? Uh, suffering or trying not to go all the way to following what society norms is telling them or be the the, dis, the disenfranchised youth in a, in a post uh, World War three uh, society mm-hmm. or are you gonna are, are you gonna bring in the whole t- uh, espers uh, ESP situation with Akira and the, and the little uh, uh, psychic kids? Are you going to talk about how uh, end of the world, end of days, uh, clan, uh, end, of, end of ways thinking versus trying to keep society afloat? Where are you going to go? Where are you going to go? And then there is also the fact that the director made some pretty... I'd say ballsy, but also very stupid statements about how they're going to do this stuff. Didn't he? Uh, um, I guess. Yeah. Uh, honestly, I've been, I've, been trying, I've been trying to keep away from any comments on this, uh, from any commentary, and if it happens, good. If it doesn't, well, we'll know. We'll probably know why, because it was. It's a big undertaking, and. It's become such a seminal movie for uh, for anime fans because uh, it's become it's a, it's, it's, it's a very important. Been, uh... Uh, it's, it's always uh, been a, a cult hit among uh, among anime fans. Uh, older uh, at fans least in the West. Got... I mean, it, yeah. I think it's more important for Western audiences than for Japanese audiences. The movie. But here's I mean. the here's the thing. Here's the thing: a lot, a lot of, the, a lot of the fans got into it because it was one of the more mature animated movies when it came out. Especially when it came out in the West, it's like, oh my god, you can do this in cartoons. Yeah, so we just uh, you see, you've seen a man gunned down. It's like that's uh, uh, that's just so different. And then, then oh, and then police oh, brutality, the... and then and then psychotropic uh, events. Yes, yeah, so like oh, okay. So this is the sort of thing they do. Well, I think I want to um, inspect that a bit more. Thank you very much. What else you got for us? And then what else they have for us turns out to be whole genres with everything from um, I don't know, um, t- um, trans age um, detectives to big burly men who carrying swords that you could use to plow fields with. You know, it's there's something for everyone. Uh, and yeah. uh, the thing which I sh- which uh, has recently come to mind, I'll, I'll segue into this one: um, glorified cockfighter, action Pokemon. <laughs> uh, like it or not, uh, yeah. Pokemon is basically cockfighting, um, yeah. and because you know, because it's always good to use the word cock in the, in a, a non ludicrous context. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. There, this is go. This is this is going to be a thing now. They they're planning uh, a live action blockbuster franchise mm. for the po- for Pokemon. I do that. Oh, I, I the see rumors that are weird. Right. Is Somebody wants just... to get the right. Sorry? Somebody wants to get the rights for it, but come on. Do do do, do they even think Nintendo and specifically Game Freak are gonna go that way? I'm like, nah. If if something happens, we're doing it. Not the, we're not leaving it for Hollywood. No. Oh, well, if if they say if they saw what happened to Dragon Ball Evolution, then they'll, uh, they'll, they'll be keeping them right. I mean, uh, I mean, you, well, know, you know, uh, you know something. I would I would actually like to see a Hollywood version of this. Uh, because I don't think they can do worse uh, than what the Pokemon anime has become in Japan. That well, shit sucks. Hey, I like Serena. That shit sucks. Well, the, the, what they should do is make it more like the original manga, which is quite racy. Yeah, or uh, maybe like, uh, <laughs> because, or maybe like hey, the hey. OAVs uh, they made uh, with uh, Pokemon Origins. Uh, that was cool. That was cool. That was the best trainer ever. Yeah, so 
I mean, le let's uh, try and think about this because I think the Pokemon as a franchise can be, you know, it, uh, it's it's a potentially easier pro property to adapt because uh, every season, every game is a new is a new region with new Pokemon or at least a new combination of Pokemon. So, okay, so, okay, you want a white kid? Okay, good. You want uh, a region that is uh, based on uh, America? You can do that. It happened in Pokemon Black and White, so no big deal. Uh, you had oh, to make... Wasn't Sorry? XY one of them regions basically based off France? Yeah, XY is France. It's fucking France. I've, oh, I've been to France, and I can confirm Gen 1 is uh, the Kanto region of Japan, right? Yeah, Kanto is Japan. Kanto and Yoto are Japan. Uh -huh. Then yeah, there is uh, uh, Hoenn that is more like, I think, uh, Polynesia, Australia, stuff like that. Do you know what it is? Do you know why they want it? With a few modifications, it becomes your post-apocalyptic young adult drama, which you stretch out for at least four movies. <laughs> so you can get the budget right for it. Think about it. You you have a um, uh, character. Um, <laughs> you know, may, maybe a, you know, a bit like you know, Cat, Cat Piss uh, or whatever her name was from the Hunger Games. Catmiss. Oh, come on. She would never have gotten out of primary school in the UK without being called Cat Piss. <laughs> I mean, she would never... So everyone would have called her Cat Piss. I mean... It's a fucking stupid name, anyway. Um, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, let's not go into that because you can't say anything bad about Jennifer Lawrence on the internet, or they're going to eat you. The internet's going to eat you. Yeah, I kiss my plums. Um, Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but anyway, so yeah, you've got your, your your character who's striving for something and going around seeing a poster pocket. Because he wants to be the very best. All sorts of peril. Because he wants to be the best, the best. And maybe also looking for a family member or whatever. Or someone's there looking for a family member somewhere to go. And you have them being betrayed at the end of the first movie. And okay, what have that's you. getting a bit too dark. This is a children property. Let's remember that. <laughs> Well, yeah, I'll, I'll put in, I'll put in um, some like short skirts and what have you from the original manga. Yeah, are you sure that one's for children? Or is that for dirty old men? Yeah. <laughs> Japan. Uh, Japan. But, yeah, in a word, lol, they're Japan. Not puss, they're not pussies about uh, everything. Really. No. They're not. Okay. So you see, uh, so you say, apocalyptic trip, uh, looking for a family member with betrayals and stuff. Okay, uh, you eagle, what uh, what would you do with a Pokemon live action movie? I wouldn't, honestly. <laughs> you wouldn't. I wouldn't. Why? Or I would say, uh, I, or, or I would place this is place this in a uh, not necessarily post apocalyptic, but in like in a different world setting where. The monsters have always been there, but the uh, they're, they're or they're I don't know the the thing is I, f I find the idea as a fantasy for collecting animals or collecting uh, well basically it was a, it was originally a, a metaphor for co for playing uh, rock paper scissors <laughs> and collect and, and collecting toys. Yeah, pretty much. But. I, I couldn't make a live action movie out of it. Only to, uh, if anything, only to use the like the gen some of the Gen One characters, the cooler looking ones, to do like a tournament thing. Mm. I personally would. Um, I think, uh, as I said, uh, I think it would be easier to adapt than other properties uh, in Japan, in mangas, anime, video games. But um, personally, I would do it as uh, you know a coming of age story. Which is pretty much uh, what uh, it's it's a theme that it's constant uh, in the in the Pokemon games, coming of age, uh, growing up uh, alongside uh, your friends, rivals, and whatever. So um, just okay. First, I would not uh, you know make him no ten years old. I'm sorry, just make him just yeah. a little older. Wait, beca because like late teenager, young, almost young adult. 
No, yeah, not I... that old, but uh, yeah, teen. Uh, if uh, he's not 14, 16. Uh, not that old, but, uh, you know, a teen. A teen, because I'm not going to give something that can potentially kill. Because th- there is that. This is a live-action movie, so we're going to show the parts that are only shown in the Pokédex, uh, usually. Because they don't show it in the anime. You have to show that Pokémon are fucking dangerous. And they are. Some of the description in the Pokédex for some Pokémon are fucking creepy. So, yeah. A, b- a bit of a older uh, protagonist. Coming of age and stuff like that. And, um... I'd say... Uh, si- since they, c- they can make him go all... Uh, you know... Uh, what the hell do you say? Uh, you know, go for the medals and stuff. Uh, maybe he finds uh, like a rare Pokemon, uh, stuff like that, uh, and you know, he, in, uh, he ends up saving uh, not the world but the cities in, uh, and he has to protect his new Pokemon friend, stuff like that. Uh, maybe, um, yeah. Okay. Also, you had to get Team Rocket in there. I want to see <laughs> live action Team Rocket trio. Yeah, Please. but it can't be just in James. It, it, it would have to be like the the Giovanni style Mafia Team Rocket. Yeah, no, but uh, I I don't. Well, you yeah. can do a Jesse okay, James. Okay, we can, we can get that as, like, as long uh, as like we get uh, as long as we get Jesse James and Meowth. We have to get them. Yeah, but but in that case, Jesse James and Meowth would be more like like like, the, like double agents infiltrating, but uh, but being the expect Inspector Clouseau's of the, <laughs> yeah. the movie. Hey, hey do, 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 do we have do we have the beach episode? Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> uh, English Shodin says, "Don't know what they're to- what you're talking about because that was banned in Western countries. It was banned in Italy as well, which is weird." Oh, scandalous. Um, yeah. if, if I'm not mistaken, well, there's w- w- one female character is in tears because, well, one... James uh, is, uh, is uh, basically... Is, uh... He cross-dresses. Yeah. Yeah. And he's hotter than her. And we're talking about Misty yeah. here. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's harsh, but one of the uh, comedy staples of Japan is jokes he's, about breast yeah, size. Yeah, cross-dressing. Yeah, well, yeah, and so okay, I can see why they'd be a bit funny about it. Uh, so yeah, I, I can. Yeah, it's like it's for kids. Why he's normally a boy? Why is he in a bikini? It's a long story. <laughs> yeah, also, also, you know, what? a scene they cut from an episode. It's the the episode in the safari zone from the first season. Where basically uh, the Team Rocket trio are interrogating uh, a park ranger or whatever, pointing guns at his face, like actual guns. <laughs> they cut that for some reason. Oh, yeah. Because guns. <laughs> that, that was like a Dirty Harry style scene, a parody of that. Uh, they cut that. I don't know. It's weird. Because we can't show guns to kids. But yeah, you can but beat you the, can't show you can ten have years old the uh, crap out of themselves by, by, uh, as instructed by their masters. Yeah, but they can show ten years olds uh, with uh, bikini models, bodies, or impossibly short skirts, I guess. Now, you can't show kids with guns, but you can take them to the gun range. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, as then, long as uh, you teach them proper, pr- proper trigger discipline. Well, it's just, so you mean so I shouldn't let a nine-year-old have an Uzi and accidentally <laughs> so he accidentally shoots his uh, um, well in his the Pokemon world they, they kind of do they kind of do well, they give them well, the Pokemon, Pokemon they kind of better than a Uzi also more dangerous most of them yeah there's a lot of so it, it's a it's a strange strange world the, the Pokemon world um uh, so it, it, the, well, you've got these uh, <laughs> these these creatures with un, un, almost unlimited power, and they and you put them to fight against each other. So, yeah. So what, what creates the Pokemon that gives them the, the kind of powers? I mean, and also the Pokedex. Right, exactly the po- 
that there's some serious um there's a serious Susie physics to be explained. <laughs> yeah, and oh, yeah. for that reason in the they they have they 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 would have to make things a bit different in a live action movie. They would have to. Okay. Okay, so we have the the last few minutes of the program, 10 minutes. Uh, is there um is there a property like um, a Japan anime or manga or whatever? That uh, you would like, uh, uh, that, you th- that you think would be possible to adapt well in an Hollywood movie? Blast Exile or Noir. Yes. Or, yes. or say, you could do, you could do Cowboy, Be- Cowboy Bebop references so many movies, it'd be quite incestuous. Um, <laughs> who would be the two girls, one cup of um, filmmaking? Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Wait, that, 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 that's um, Fifty Shades of Grey. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, uh, yeah, um, yeah. Say, uh, yeah, because uh, oh, well, I quite like Last Exile. It's got a good design aesthetic. I do like the Art Deco designs, yep. and it's you know you've got exciting flying things going on, and you know an interesting world. I know, the, the races of the characters aren't important. Because all as much as, as they're humans, so you know you did, they don't even have to use the characters of, of Last Exile. You just put it in that setting. The concept, and, really? Oh yeah, the concept. You don't even have to name anyone who ex- exactly is the, the character's name. So you you cast whoever you like as whoever you like. They are everyone's a winner, and you know. Uh, I'm not sure we'd still get Cloud Age Symphony as the main theme for it, but you know what. Yeah. I'm willing to roll the dice on that one. It would still be better than pod raising. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you, Eagle? Eagle, any property uh, that you feel would benefit from a, a pro- Hollywood adaptation? A property I feel would work in movies, but provided the right CGI and the right director. Guillermo del Toro? <clears throat> <laughs> any uh, any of the old school Gundam movies? You read my fucking mind. I'm like, or like, like, like UC Century, and and leave them as is. Don't adapt them for for kiddies. Leave them as adult military dramas as they are. Yeah, and don't be afraid of stepping on toes. Don't uh, and yes, leave the leave the references to not Nazis, not political trauma. Because that's the nature of the, the of that kind of uh, of, of, of that kind of franchise. Oh yeah, I know for a fact that there's been a really bad attempt at making Fist of the North Star, and oh. they try. <laughs> yeah, they it, try. It's a, for a for a B grade movie is actually pretty fun and cheesy. Uh huh. But it's it's so fantastic it couldn't. I, I want to say movies like that. Either you go very high tech. Or very low tech. Anything very mystical, it's going to be very, very hard to work on. Because high tech, you can explain. You can explain like technology is so that far advanced. Why not? Yeah, no, you know, magic. You know, that's just one of the things why I prefer my science to my fantasy, as it were. Because oh, a wizard did it versus oh, this is the advanced technology. It's like. You know, I, I, there's current technology that sort of looks like sorcery to me, so I, I, I let it slide, which for, for better or worse. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, I'd say Gundam would could be quite nice. Uh, yeah, I but agree. I, I, I would point you in the direction of G Savior mm. as a, as a cautionary tale. Or yeah. Guyver. <laughs> oh yes, Guyver. Yeah. How could we? We didn't touch oh, yeah. on that, but there was a Guyver movie with Mark Hamill. I was going to say it wasn't here in that one. That that was um, not good, from what I recall, mind you. No, so, over 20, 20 years ago since I recall seeing anything of it, so I'd almost completely forgotten about it, actually. Yeah. <laughs> You've triggered my PTSD, you bastard. <laughs> triggered. <laughs> Okay, um, me personally, okay, you kind of stole my idea because I too feel that Gundam would be a good fit. Uh, another property that will lend itself well to uh, uh, to a Hollywood adaptation, I have to say, One Punch Man. 
<laughs> I mean, just keep, just keep the humor intact, because it's not exactly that deep uh, mired uh, into Japanese um, culture. As in, there is not like the theme of the bomb uh, or the fear of the atomic bomb, uh, like Godzilla or Akira stuff like that. And uh, you know, the the only references to Japan are some food. Uh, and a couple jokes, uh, but uh, just uh, well, and, and the fact that the that the that the, 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 the mega continent of that world is basically based off the the geological map of the uh, the, the state of Saitama in Japan. Yeah, pretty mm. much. But um, just um, that's not. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's not. Uh, mm-hmm. the, that's not. That's not really important. Just keep the humor. Just keep the yeah. jokes, uh, the um, the parodies, or the tropes uh, that even even the US can understand. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know the the bold guy with uh, an interesting uh, costume and stuff like that. Uh, the guys who talk too much uh, and the guy who wins with one punch. Those are all things they can understand. So mm-hmm. it's not even that dialogue heavy. So chose an arc maybe up until uh, the, the first season of the anime that would be good they could do that uh, with a hollywood yeah. movie just keep that um, <laughs> keep the all the jokes keep all the troops keep the parody keep everything well i don't think they can keep the lolly sadly but uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, you, you can She's you can technically do that. not a lolly sorry He's technically not a lolly. Yeah, he but yeah, like you know what I mean. Yes, yeah. those legs are not well, that of a lolly, too, either. So, okay. Well, so, who, who, who do you put as Saitama? Oh, that's a that's a that's a. The thing is, one. you would need to get somebody that is so unassuming until uh, until he gets his game face on. Yeah. Mm. And I'd say you could have uh, any number of um, pretty boys as uh, Genos. So you, oh, yeah. you could you could localize that to the U.S., um, or we could actually you mm-hmm. could localize that to a generic multiracial big city. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and, and 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 it's like okay, well we're shot in here, but it's not necessarily you know it was shot in Vancouver you know for tax purposes, <laughs> but not necessarily set in Vancouver. It could be set into wherever. But if you just as your generic city, then you don't run into the issues with the localization too much. Yeah. You do yeah. realize there's one throughout hard. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's really no... You know, there there is no whitewashing to be had because their races don't influence their characters. There, there is no Japan. There is nothing to influence. So, yeah. They, they, could, uh, they could adapt. Also, imagine... I mean, just just imagine, just imagine the fights uh, from. Uh, okay, they're they're pretty fucking awesome. They would they would need to do them right. I don't want no blurry camera shit. Just do them uh, oh, like yeah. shot by shot. Yeah, and I mean, it's... like it or not, so someone's face is going to explode <laughs> when Saitama punches it. Yeah, and then oh, oh, I you can have it. super. I read it. Oh well, hard. Oh, pff, but NC seventeen. You know, like proper make hardcore Henry look like um, Murder Man versus Captain Hypocrite. Um, <laughs> I mean, it, it would be absolutely brutal, but it would be so much fun. It would be like the original cut of um, of RoboCop. I mean, it, it could also play it as a satire of violence and a, a satire of superheroes. Yeah, there, there is just so hey, uh, much. You could do with uh, with a Hollywood version of uh, of One Punch Man. So I would like to see that. Also, oh, yeah. right. the also, and that's uh, that's that would be like really ironic. You get more hope from seeing Saitama fight than from seeing Superman nowadays. <laughs> yeah. How the fuck did we come to that point? Well, Saitama doesn't look like he's passing a kidney stone. Um. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, uh, last 30 seconds. We have to shut down this joint right now. Okay. Uh, it's a, uh, 
Yeah, so say so. Yeah, I, I would. Yeah, so one Punch Man would entertain me. Yeah, uh, I, I, I would see that. Okay, guys. Uh, so, uh, Last Exile, Old Gundam, One Punch Man. We want to see them in Hollywood. Don't write because they are easier to adapt. They are easier to write than other properties. This was the Italian Pod. I'm Minoskai, your host, as always, my co-host, Lord Ra. Hello. And Eagle Ceres. Hasta luego. We'll see you next time on the next Italian Pod.